Hi everyone, welcome back to Memdogs. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure uh, that's going to be a nice uh, payoff for all the cock teasing we did in the last episode, followed by more cock teasing at the end of this episode, hopefully. Yeah, cool. Suddenly I hear the glass, sound of glass shattering behind me. It was the Kool-Aid man. Will this be sudden, something truly, truly shocking, or more stupidity? Well, you're, you're saying like it can't oh, no. be both. Ow, owie, owie's uh, in pain there. And a soft scream right after. Is that a, is that a hentai noise? I turn around and see the door open, and Owie's standing in the doorway. At her feet are shards of broken glass from the cup she dropped, along with the tray and plastic bottle filled with tea. We were so focused on Raina's story, we weren't paying attention to our surroundings. Okay, so she's just shocked that Serrano's there. Oh, okay. No. Serrano? Is that Serrano? Aoi-san staring at Serrano, dumbfounded. Oh, nay chan Now we're gonna have a touchy-feely moment. Wait, what's this room? This is a new room. After cleaning up the glass shards, we all moved to the living room. Aoi-san made lunch for us. There's a whole host of dishes laid out on the table, so... Soman noodles with pork and bean sprouts, pumpkin with sesame seeds sprinkled on top, some chopped okra, okra topped with miso sauce and tofu with tomatoes, cucumbers, and chicken. That's, uh, that's pretty elegant. Sounds good. Someone was, someone was hungry when they wrote this. Huh. We all sit silently, admiring the feast before us. Oh. Does she look kind of derpy in that one, Serrano? Like, she looks a like she's... little bit. Yeah, her eyes are a little across. Aoi-san keeps looking at Serrano, then back at the ground, then back at Serrano. Serrano's sh shrine is in this room, too. We gave Aoi-san a brief explanation of what happened, but it's probably a lot to take in all at once. Serrano looks like she doesn't know what to say to Aoi-san, either. She's just been silently staring at the ground the whole time. Aoi-san peels her eyes away from Serrano and gives us all a troubled smile. Come on, everyone, eat up. Food is great for cheering you up when you're depressed. I think we're a little more than depressed right now. Yeah, not to mention, I, I think that's how a lot of people get themselves into problems, is eating to emotionally, you know, fill the void. Yeah. I'm alright then, I guess I'll get started. Thanks for the food. Also, I don't recall us calling them out this, at the time, but yeah, it does seem rather insensitive to bring up the hologram of someone's dead family member inside their own house. Yeah. Kakaru cheerfully extends his chopsticks towards the noodles where Reina hesitantly reaches out for the pumpkin. Following suit, I take some okra myself. Uh, by the way, viewers, if any of you can draw, if you draw Reina with a pumpkin, uh, Christian, please retweet that. You can't just use my fans to get frickin' Reina art out of them, man. With a pumpkin? I don't know, it's, it's the day after Halloween we're recording this, so it's, it's I, fucking I see, topical. I see, I see. Yeah, way to date the episode and tell everyone just how long it takes for me to get these out. You do a lot of stuff. Yeah, I know, okay. I know, I know. Fucking now then, then, then censor, then censor what I just said. No, I'm gonna leave it in. Like, like Andrew's joke, it's just gone. Topical. Yeah. Gonna... Fine, fine, well, I'm leaving it in. It looks like there's bonito slices and bits of dried plum mixed in with the okra. I don't really think I'll be able to taste anything even if I eat now, but Aoi-san made it especially for us. You ungrateful fuck. I raise my chopsticks to my mouth. It's good. The texture and sourness is just right. Mm. Yeah, this is really good. Ah, <laughs> like... Uh, I feel like I finally get to eat, eat an actual meal. The food Yonekura-san made for us yesterday was good too, but this feels like it was made with a lot more effort. Yeah, I guess, I guess seeing your dead family members in hologram form really improves your cooking skills. Kakaru's right. I need a drink of water. My throat is getting parched. Okay. It had been a long time since I've had such an elaborate meal. <sighs> it's delicious, Aoi-san. You got to read one text. Yeah, it's covered for you. Oh yeah, thanks. Aoi-san replies absent-mindedly. 
She slowly puts down her chopsticks and extends her right hand so towards Serrano. It's probably an unconscious action on Aoi-san's part. Serrano smiles sadly and shakes her head. Just like me, Aoi-san can't touch Serrano. Although, the difference is that that wasn't always true for Aoi-san. <laughs> Just saying. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Onei-chan. It feels like you've come back to me, Serrano. I wish you really had. I wanted to meet you too again. Ugh. Meet you again too, Onei-chan. But unfortunately you have stupid rules, so I get deleted after 49 days for, like, no particularly well-explained reason. I didn't even have time to say goodbye. Yeah. I decide to ask Aoi-san. Aoi-san wa... Aoi-san, you didn't go to the, to the Connect Center? It's embarrassing to say this in front of Serrano herself, but well... I knew that if I didn't go before her memories got digitumed, I'd never be able to see her again, but even then I couldn't bring myself to go. Just like me, Aoi-san was wrestling with the same feelings. She... she knew she had to go soon, but she still couldn't bring herself to. Every time she tried, it felt like a vice was gripping her heart. I'm a failure of an older sister. But now I was able to meet you. It's kind of a shock seeing you like this, but I'm glad I got to see you again. The look Aoi-san gives Serrano is bittersweet. Yeah, um, there's something I wanted to tell you, Onei-chan. Is this becoming a Yuri visual novel? A Yuri incest visual novel? Same difference. Also, is it technically a Yuri incest necrophilia visual novel because she's dead? No, because she's a hologram, so it's a, like... Holophilia? Mechophilia? I don't know. Holophilia? Viewers, you decide which one's more applicable. Okay. Thank you, thank you for raising me all this time. Fucking traitor, Serrano. Serrano? Oh, and yeah, her, her family died too, because you know. Even after mom and dad died, I was happy living with you, Onei-chan. It was thanks to you that we were never poor, too. Pretty sure they established that a long while ago. Did they? Okay. Yeah. I'm not sure if I remember that. Probably right. the first time we came to our house. Yeah, yeah. And I put sunglasses on all the kitties. Yeah. He even paid for my college. I'm really thankful for that. I bet Aoi's not thankful for the ref refund policy. Yeah, that investment's down the drain. <laughs> uh, I mean, like, and that's the thing, like, she she's trying to be nice and being like, oh, thank you for everything, but she's also casually mentioning up that, like, this is the last family member she said. Yeah. Thank you so much, Onei-chan. You did a great job raising me before your finally final family member died. Mm -hmm. You don't have to thank me for anything. I was saved by you too, Serrano. It's because you were there that I could kept going. These uh, depression memes are getting pretty crispy right now. Hee hee hee. Sorry, I'm going to wash the dishes really quick. Uh, guys, she just casually mentioned that that's the that you know her sister being alive was the only thing keeping her going. I would say just just as precaution, don't leave her unattended. Yeah. Aoi-san suddenly stands up and heads towards the kitchen. Where there's a lot of sharp, pointy objects that people who have, uh, you know, uh, mental health issues could, could use for inappropriate reasons. She puts her hands in the sink and looks down. Do you think I said too much? Not at all. But... I'll go help. Yes, our lovely protagonist that accomplishes nothing throughout this story besides be there. What could possibly go wrong?
I give Serrano a look telling her it might be alright to go and stand next to Aoi-san. Aoi-san, I'll help clean up. Also, I, I, I can't help but notice that everyone in this freaking game, universe, whatever, they don't turn their TVs off. They just have a no signal listed there. Like, even t TVs nowadays, if you leave them on for too long, they're t they power down to save electricity. Yeah, yeah. It's like, uh, it, this is just wasteful right here, and I, and I don't like that. Yeah. Like, it, it seems like every time they try to build this world, they just throw in, like, really stupid details instead of details that make sense. The background angers me. Yeah. Zero out of ten. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Sniffling, Aoi-san starts washing the pots with pots and strainer with a sponge. Could you wipe the dishes dry? Sure. Aoi-san silently washes the dishes for a while. I concentrate on drying the dishes she hands me. After a while, Aoi-san finally opens her mouth. I said earlier that I couldn't bring myself to go, but that was a lie. You mean why you didn't go to the Connect Center? Yes. They said at the Connect Center that I could talk with Serrano again, that her memories are preserved inside, but I don't think that's quite right. What's inside there isn't the real Serrano. It's not my real sister. That's what I thought. I know there are people that have been saved by the Connect Center. And I can understand their feelings too, but... But when I finally found myself having to go there, all I could think was, don't mock me. What do you think people's feelings are? Aoi-san doesn't stop washing the dishes and stares fixedly at the sink. Her words are directed mostly at herself. Only she's efficient. But when I saw Serrano sitting there, when I talked with her, I thought, it's really Serrano in front of me right now. Ah, uh, I was about to let the opportunity to meet Serrano slip through my fingers. Thank you, Hiroki. I'm the one that should be thanking you. I'm really grateful for all the help you've given us. And the police should be busting down and shooting everyone to death any moment now. Just yeah. to break up this moment. Don't worry, no one's gonna die. They have plot armor because they're a protagonist, or they're cute, or I they're guess like in the, the end, male character. Serrano and Aoi-san's planned reunion, unplanned reunion was a good thing. Relieved, I think now is a good time to ask. The one thing I've always wanted to ask Aoi-san. Is she single? Three sizes, it's Japan, bro. What? You ask her her three sizes, it's the bust waist hip. Oh, okay. Yeah. Fucking, you should, you're a weeboo, you should know this shit too. No, I don't pay attention to that. About the accident Serrano died in. Oh, okay, you mean you never asked her about this. Yeah. Um, there's something I want to ask you about the accident Serrano died in. In which Serrano died? What? In which Serrano died, not Serrano died in. You don't don't be that guy right now. Boop. <laughs> About the accident. Sorry for bringing it up like this, but I'd like to ask now. Like what the police told you about what happened, or any thoughts you might have on the event. Everything basically. Is there anything you know of, Aoi-san? When it happened, it was so sudden, I was too shocked to care too much about the details, honestly. 
I see. The police told me the details about what happened, but it pretty much went in one year, one ear, and out the other. How he saw stares far off into the distance before finally looking at me. Why do you ask? I mentioned this before, too, but Serrano's memories are incomplete, and there's some things I just don't get about what happened. I see. Is that why you became a criminal? Stop right there, criminal scum. Huh? Howie-san looks at me sternly. Normally, there's no way you'd be allowed to bring Serrano here. Which means that you're accessing Serrano's memories illegally from the Connect Center somehow. Which, let's be fucking real, if this technology existed and Kakaru was able to make it so that you could project a hologram in your household, everybody would be demanding this yeah, I was about, right now. Yeah, I was gonna say something pretty similar. It's like, it's like no, 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 no. Especially since we're finding out that the Connect Center is not even government owned and run yeah it, it, it's a private corporation it's like no 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 you, you don't give a 30 minute time limit and a buddhist time limit on the on the data store just like screw you give me the home version yeah and like it's like this is some fuck boy at college who knows a little about computers can do it like you know would be you know would be terrible but somehow less worse than the buddhist time limit a monthly subscription oh that would be fucking brutal yeah <laughs> See, that would actually make a more interesting plot. Then there'd be like an ethical dilemma of like, you know, I don't want to give these assholes money because this shouldn't be a service, but at the same time, no one's going to not pay. Yeah. Like, that would be an interesting thing. It, it seems like, I don't know, let's, I, I, we can't discuss ethics in this fucking... I mean, okay, let's be real, this Connect Center, do you, as we've learned in, in the last few episodes, they don't exactly run on ethics. Yeah, or, or, or logical reasons for things. Yeah. And, and by the way, I'm not sure if you mentioned this before, but like, also holograms don't work that way. Yeah. Like, I'm just saying, it's like, you know. Yeah, but they're doing the, the, the how everyone thinks holograms work. Yeah, I know, but like, she, she seems pretty smart. She, she was able to pay for her sister's college tuition without any parents. I mean, she must be pretty resourceful yes. and smart. She should call bullshit on this. Of course, I'm glad that you let me meet Serrano. But a crime is still a crime. There's nothing I can say back to that. Awisan keeps talking. Does this mean you being wanted isn't a mistake either? Oh, I talked over her. My bad. We haven't done the things they're accusing us of on the news. If nothing else, please believe that. Well, you did hack a hologram, so I can see why you'd kill dozens of people in a terrorist attack. I want to know the truth. We only have a few days left before we can no longer talk with Serrano. Once Serrano's memories are erased from the Connect Center, I'll never be able to find out the truth. Because it's not like there's blade arm mutants running around in a giant fucking corporation with a documented history of all the shit they're doing somewhere. Hmm. But that means you'll need to prepare yourself for the consequences. There aren't going to be any consequences. Once we bring down the evil organization, like, they're going to file charges against us. They're just going to fucking pin that little medal you get for blowing up the Death Star on us and call it a day, and then we get to pick which cutie we want to fuck the most. <laughs> best girl. Of course, I know finding out the truth won't bring Serrano back. I hope he'll stop innocent people from dying at the hands of Blade Arm mutant guys. If there really wasn't anything suspicious behind Serrano's death, then that's fine too. Okay, that possibility is out the goddamn window. Don't even try to say that. Yeah, that that's that it's just one of those things that doesn't happen in storytelling. Yeah. It's like there was a planet and no life ever grown at the end. <laughs> But considering all that's happened to us, I have a hard time thinking it was really just suicide. 
That's why I at least want to find out what happened to her. Also, I like how she was pulling the crime is still a, t a crime argument against us when even the police are crooked on this. Yeah. As we've no doubt le learned. Not to mention, it's like some, like, even even a court would agree that not every time, like, a crime is a crime. Like, if, if you're, like, dirt poor and you steal a loaf of bread to feed your family, like, no one's gonna be like, oh yeah, fucking ten years of hard labor, bitch. Like, no, they understand, like, okay, there's, there's a context to that. <laughs> I'd, I'd much rather get arrested than forever regret not being able to find out the truth about Serrano's death. Aoi-san turns around to look at Serrano. She's conversing happily with Kakaru and Reina. So then I bought the muffler because I thought it would look good on Onechan, but when I got home, I saw that same muffler there. Onechan got it for me too because she thought it would look good on me. I'm kind of jealous. I know what you mean, Reina Chan. I wish I had an Onechan like that. Hashtag relatable, am I right? <laughs> well, you can't have mine, foo foo. Howie son sighs loudly. All right. She looks back at me. Honestly, I wasn't sure what the right thing to do was. Also, by the way, I'll point out, just, just in the continuation of the previous gag, she did say that right, and then you, you re read it wrong. I don't care. But I've decided. I wasn't able to protect Serrano, but I'll at least protect you guys. And you'll be safe behind bars, criminal scum! Aoi-san, thank you. You guys shouldn't leave the house. And you should close the curtains on those giant fucking windows anyone could look into and see a bunch of oh. terrorists. Don't give us that, Aoi. We're, we're, we know we're not gonna be here long. We know the writers aren't clever enough to make it work with us hiding in this house for a while. Um, so how long until the police bust in? I give it ten text boxes. Yeah, that sounds about right. Okay, I'll, I'll hold up the fingers. Okay. Viewers, you can't see it. I'm holding up the fingers. We're at nine right now. If there's something you guys need, don't go get it yourself. I'll buy it for you. Got it? Got it. All right, let's get back to our meal. Oh, we're changing scenes now. Okay, black screen doesn't count as one, by the way. After eating lunch, we all return to Serrano's room. I tell everyone what Aoi-san and I talked about. When I finish, Reina's got a complicated expression on her face. We're really putting a huge burden on Aoi. Aoi-san didn't look strained at all when she was happily talking to us during lunch, but that was probably because she didn't want us to worry. Yeah, Aoi-san... Aoi san, she'd hide us. Okay, they, they forgot a word there. Fucking refund this bullshit right now. Yeah, Aoi san said she'd hide us here for as long as we need, but we can't stay here forever. We need to figure out our next course of action. They forgot to put a said there. Now, now, all we can do for now is stay positive. Oh shit, we ran out of text boxes. Kakaru pats us on the shoulder before going back to his laptop. Okay. Now then. I wonder if I can pull this off. Oh my. You're as cheerf cheerful as always. It's like you're not worried at all. I can't tell if you're mocking me or not. Kakaru beckons us over and turns his laptop our way. 
So I made a program that's supposed to break into the very heart of the Connect Center's network. Because, <laughs> because, because we're hiding out at Aoi-san's house, the writers needed to come up with some way for us to get more exposition. Which means Kakaru can just do whatever the fuck he wants with like a laptop. By the way, uh, this program is also a cute girl because we need more cute girls in this to put on the cover and sell to viewers or something. <clears throat> Kakaru just casually talks about another one of his crazy feats. I mean, it's a program, so you can't fuck the cute girl, but then again, you can't fuck the dead Serrano because she's a hologram and or a dead body, depending on your preferences, both of which you can't fuck. I mean, I expected it, expected it, but man, their security was tough. Okay, Kakaru, if you could do this from the beginning, why the hell did we need to go to the Connect Center at the start of the game? Well, I don't know, it's plot shit to meet, meet the cute blue-haired girl. I yeah, mean, but he needed to plug directly into the foam thing, well, remember? I, I think, like, maybe he's exploiting it from that, like, inside... Potentially. Potential security. I don't yeah, know, but, I don't honestly remember. But I remember. mean, yeah, they don't really, like, this is like Hollywood hacking where it's like, oh, I'm gonna, you know, rewire the JPEG mainframe and, you know, reset the Ethernet connection to, you know, bypass the brute force hacking attempt, and then, like, it's whatever bullshit magic. Or, you know, it's it like, it's like one well of those home security ads where, you know, like, they cut to, where, like, you know, someone's trying to break in the house, and then, you know, it cuts to, like, a panning shot of someone at click-clacking on a computer. It's yeah. like, it's like, I'm doing computer things. Is everything okay? Yeah. Like, it really may as well have been, and then Gandalf walked in and cast a little level five hacking spell yeah. to unlock the door, and that that's fucking it, because it's right. all just magic bullshit. There's a number of authentic authentication windows on on the screen. God, I can't say that word right. From the looks of it, you need to provide some kind of biometric verification to go any further. On a computer? I don't know how that works either. I mean, I guess like maybe make like I guess you had like the eyeball scanner shit from James Bond movies like at the scene, but that's not going to work on your laptop. Yeah. Think you can get past it? It'll be pretty difficult to do remotely. It should be literally impossible to do remotely. <laughs> yeah, I see. Like, what, do you just have, like, a website where everyone's eyeball is illegally scanned and you purchase it off, like, the, the, the dark net or something? Well, the greater the challenge, the more rewarding it is to clear. Whatever which, he... me which means I'll, I'll make progress on this after the next emotional scene. Yeah, whatever, it's gonna be bullshit anyways. <laughs> Kakaru is in high spirits, despite the difficulty of the task before him. With a spirited let's do this, Kakaru begins typing away on his keyboard again. Serrano's staring at me with a serious expression. Hey, Hirokun. What's up? We won't be able to go outside for a while, right? Hmm, <laughs> maybe. If Kakaru succeeds, then that'll probably be the case, but if not, we can hardly just stay holed up here forever doing nothing. That's how being on the run works. Also, I just noticed that uh, Kakaru and Rina are in like very similar positions. They're both with their arms folded up that same mm -hmm. way. They're kind of like our backup dancers. Everyone likes to cross their arms, yeah. Yeah. If we don't hurry, you'll disappear. I leave those last words unsaid. Anyway, you don't need to worry, Serrano. Instead, I just reassure. I'm sure Serrano already knows all knows anyway. Just because you're telling me not to worry doesn't mean I won't worry. Not unless we delete your worry memories. I don't think that's how it works. I think that that's an emotion, not a memory. Well, whatever. I'm sure if you go into the folder you can you can delete it. It's like system thirty two. Yeah, it's just, you know, you scroll past the folders, you know, like lewd thoughts, embarrassing thoughts, you know, secrets you're not going to tell Hiroki, and it's like, you're saving that one for later. Isn't it dangerous for you guys to go outside now? Yeah, but... If we take everything into consideration, staying here for a while might be the best option. I mean, the artist can only draw so many backgrounds, guys. Didn't you say? Didn't you just say we're a, we're a huge burden on Aoi-san earlier? Of course, I don't want to trouble Aoi any more than we already have. 
But if we just run around aimlessly outside, we'll only be putting ourselves in danger. If we don't have a destination in mind, then... Reyna trails off and silently rests her chin on her hands. Eventually, she opens her mouth again. I could go to the Connect Center alone. But then you won't be in the story, and you're too cute to abandon, so we should probably all go together. That doesn't seem like... That seems like the worst freaking idea possible. But then how are you going to rescue her in the Soul Society arc if she's not captured? Mm-hmm. Huh? What are you thinking? Among our potential options, this is one of the few viable ones. If I could just make it back to my lab, there's a number of ways I could get access to the master copy of Serrano's memories. Okay, that it, there is no possible way that idea could ever work, even in even in this novel. I mean, assuming she has the security access, like, they're gonna know you're doing that. They're gonna have security guards yeah, there. Yeah, not to mention she's wanted for terrorism right now. And it's specifically the organization that knows they screwed her over and that knows that she knows. Yeah. Don't you know best just how difficult it is to sneak in there? I do, and that's why I'm proposing that I go there alone. One person is less likely to attract attention. You're telling me we should send a single girl alone into the enemy's base, where they're most likely on the lookout for you. Kakaru's trying his best here already. Are you telling me you don't trust us, Reina? That's not it. I just want to do what I can as well. Calm down, you two. Serrano's uncharacteristic outburst shocks us both into silence, and we both look at her. I don't want anything bad to happen to anyone. Well, you're already dead, so tough shit. I don't want you to go either, Reina-chan. Serrano. Reina can't say anything back to Serrano. Serrano continues muttering softly. I'm really happy that we were all able to meet again like this, and that you're all working so hard for my sake. But the fact that you're all suffering because of it too is really painful for me. Serrano earnestly conveys her feelings to us. How am I supposed to respond to that? No matter what we do, someone will have to be put in danger. Kakaru continues working on his program while Reina and Serrano silently stare at each other. I avert my gaze from Serrano and stand up. Where are you going? Kakaru asks without looking up from his monitor. Just going to get some fresh air. I need to cool my head a little. At the Connect Center, maybe? Something bad's about to happen. I walk into the hallway, trying to escape from that stifling atmosphere. Um, is this a good time to pause it, maybe? Uh, what? No? Okay. We've only been going for like a half hour, I'd say. Okay. Yeah. I go back downstairs and take a deep breath. Since I'm here anyway, I guess I'll grab a drink. As I start heading towards the kitchen, I hear a faint voice from the living room. Uh-oh. I mean, yeah, I just figured if they're changing scenes. Yes, of course. You're completely right. All right, Aoi's going to sell us out, and we got to make an escape. Yeah. Oh, this ain't good. Yeah, she's just trying to trick us there to stay us, to get us there to stay longer so she can call the pope ball on her ass. Looks like Aoi-san's on the phone with someone. I walk more quietly, trying not to make any noise. That still won't make Serrano come back to life. Hmm? I unconsciously stop to listen when I hear the word Serrano. I take a peek into the living room. I 
How he son sounds depressed as she talks. She must have been in the middle of work. Either way, I don't know anything. Judging from her tone, whoever she's talking to isn't a friend. Someone from work or maybe a family member, member perhaps? Ah. Aoi-san looks up and sees me. Oh, come on! <laughs> Sorry, but I need to go now. I thought we were going to be listening. She was going to be selling us out. Just yeah. seems like we're just interrupting something unimportant now. Yeah. Aoi-san hardly hangs, hangs up and I suddenly feel bad for interrupting. Sorry, did I disturb you? Disturb you? Ugh. Not at all. It's fine. I wasn't talking about anything important. She's lying. Aoi-san gives me her usual smile. But for some reason, I feel like her face is a little pale. Did you need something? I was just thinking of getting something to drink, if that's not too much trouble. Oh, not at all. I've got some canned juice in the fridge. Wait here. I'll bring you some. By the way, Hiroki, you're not familiar with the taste of rat poison, are you? As I watch Aoi-san head to the fridge, I notice that she looks even thinner than before. She must have not had much of an appetite after Serrano died. Here you go. Take some up for Kakaru and the others, too. I know how much you love purple Kool-Aid. I like how she says for Kakaru and the others, because, you know, Serrano can drink. Yeah. Anything. Yeah. But she can't because she's a hologram. Yeah. Like, I, I think she's just trying to avoid addressing that. By the way, is curry all right for dinner? Yeah, sorry for making you do all this. Don't worry about it. It was more depressing when I was all alone at home. Contemplating my revenge. It's gotten more lively with you all here, so I'm happy to have you. I can't bring myself to say anything, seeing Aoi-san trying so hard to be cheerful. Oh, it's just transitioning at time, yeah. Guess that that's a decent way of telling us. Mm. Suddenly the world around me is surrounded by grey. Where am I? Trembling at coldness of the ground, I get up. I squint my eyes, but I'm unable to see anything. There's no buildings, no plants, no people. There's not a single indication that anything lives here. A completely grey void world. Whatever. Same thing. Yeah. It's a void. I don't know why I read the word void, but whatever. Serrano? I unconsciously mutter Serrano's name. There's no response. I still can't see anything but gray. There's no indication that any anyone's here. Just an endless expanse of gray in every direction. I timidly start walking forward. But even as I keep walking, the scenery remains the same. This gray world stretches on forever. How far do I have to walk? How far do I have to go before I can meet Serrano? No one can answer that question for me. What? Suddenly a large wall appears, blocking my path. I try smacking it, but it's a pretty sturdy wall. I give up on trying to go through it and turn to the right. But then suddenly the wall extends to the right as well, and I walk straight into it. I try stepping backwards, but I feel my back touch something hard. I turn around and see yet another wall. What's going on? I find myself surrounded by high walls on one side. Jesus Christ, could you spell it out any more painfully? Obviously. Ugh. Like, yeah. you, look, you look like you're falling asleep here. No, no I'm fine. Okay. It's just... The walls surrounding me start to soundlessly close in on me. <laughs> Shit. I try and push the wall back, but my legs just start sliding while the wall doesn't slow at all. At this rate, I'll be crushed. Soon enough, there's barely enough space for me to stand. I desperately keep pushing, trying to make some space for myself. Wall jump. Wall jump, scrub. Suddenly, the walls stop moving. Huh. I'm saved. 
As I finally stop to take a breather, the walls suddenly accelerate again, closing in, in on me. As they start to crush me, my vision goes black. Okay, I was going to say for a second, I thought that, like, him not being crushed was going to be like, oh, and then, like, some cutie's hugging him while he's asleep or something. But no, yeah. he just gets crushed because it's, it's, it's grim and edgy. It's grim, yeah. And it's also incredibly subtle writing for how he feels right now. Yeah, yeah. Huh. To be fair, in this game, he could have just had a dream where a character shows up and exposits everything in his dream. I mean, would it really surprise you? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, 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 I feel like I'd take too long to come up with a really better example, but, but like, they could have just... For, I get what they were going for with that, but, like, it's just... It, it was... It was just... Not not subtle at all what they yeah. were doing, yeah. and I just yeah, I don't know. It seemed lazy. Have I nitpicked enough for this of this game? No. Well, saying you did it too much implies it doesn't deserve it, which does. As I open my eyes, I find myself in an unfamiliar room. After a while, collecting my thoughts, I remember this is the guest bedroom in Serrano's house. After dinner, Aoi San had put out three futons here for us. A dream. I think I was having a nightmare, but I can't remember the details. I shake my head, trying to drive out the last remnants of my dream. To my right, Kakaru is still sleeping soundly. He's probably been asleep this whole time. To my left, Rain is sleeping with her back to me. Ever since our argument this afternoon, things have been kind of awkward between us. What should we do next? Th that question has still, still hasn't been answered. The more I think about it, the more jumbled up my thoughts get. Man, now I'm not even sleeping anymore. I get up deciding to spend some time in Serrano's room. I quietly get out of my futon. <coughs> ah. Yay, more kitty stuff. This will be the first time I've gone into gone to Serrano's room at night. Just to make that clear. No. I debate for a bit whether I should not turn whether I should turn on the lights, but in the end I decide not to. I try to bring Serrano out with my MRD. Instead, I get a display icon telling me I'm out of battery. Damn it. You normally just charge your MRD over Wi-Fi, so no one bothers to actually keep track of their battery. You can do that? Um, it's like could... a future technology kind of idea. I... Like, charging it over, like, with radio waves where, like, the energy carries it. Oh, I, I feel like, I thought that was might have been, like, a thing we can currently do. Is um... it? I think to a degree, but it's not really like widely spread. It's kind of just like developing uh, stuff. I feel I don't know. It sort of sounds weird to charge a battery with wireless signals, but then again, so does everything we do with wireless signals nowadays. Yeah. But after last night, I turned Wi-Fi off to make sure no one tries to contact us. And since I made it so that my MRD will only connect to Kakaru's laptop this afternoon, I haven't paid attention to its battery at all. Well, I can't do anything about it now. I should at least start charging it before I go back to sleep, though. While absent-mindedly thinking about such things, I walk towards Serrano's bed. I do inappropriate things to it. The covers are cool and pleasant to the touch. Serrano's body heat will never warm this bed again. As I stand there with my hand, hand on the bed, I, an unfamiliar feeling starts spreading throughout me. I'm surprised at these new emotions whirling within me. Serrano's no longer alive. I've, been t I've told myself that hundreds of times now. And now that I've just been able to talk to Serrano's memories, I thought I had finally fully prepared myself to accept it. But I guess little by little, I'll start getting... I'll start to get sentimental. I didn't think the reality of Serrano's no longer here would hit me this hard. Serrano. Serrano. I kneel on the ground, clenching my fists. I want to scream, I want to cry my heart out right now, but I can't. All I can do is grit my teeth and sit here. Hiroki, Hiroki you couldn't sleep? I hear a whisper behind me and turn around to find Reina standing there. Seeing my face, Reina closes her eyes apologetically. Ah, oh. uh, sorry, you probably wanted to talk with Serrano alone. Nah, I'm here by myself. I force myself to speak normally, but Rain is slowly edging back out of the room. She's probably disgusted at how pathetic I am. I change my posture and sit down facing Serrano's bed. 
as I do so. I, sp I suddenly feel a slight touch on my back. The music's getting new. Okay, can I hear it for a second? Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay, cool. I can feel the warmth through my t-shirt. Okay, I thought she was going to be hugging him, but I mean... Oh, I you that's... wish there'd be a hug? Yeah, I mean, like, th this is, like, it, it's trying to be cute, but it's not as cute as it could have been, you know? Reyna. Silently, Reyna sits down with her back against mine. The warmth of her back brings back memories of the time I spent with Serrano. The sight of her smiling face as she held stuffed cats in each arm. The times we spent at her house eating the food Aoi saw and cooked together. Serrano dragging Kakaru and me to a photo booth to commemorate our high school graduation. Each and every one of those memories feels so far away now. I don't know how much time has passed, but... Reyna stayed with me there until I finally calmed down again. Trying to hide my embarrassment, I start to speak. Reyna, um, I'm sorry. Don't worry about it. Reyna's reply is so faint, I have to strain my ears to hear it. But the warmth I feel coming from her isn't faint at all. I suddenly feel like telling her about the thoughts I've been hiding from everyone. Reyna, would you mind listening to me for a bit? I always felt like I was actually a, 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 a wolf spirit trapped inside a human. And and I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna I, I have I've been building a fursuit. I'm gonna wear it all the time now. Um please call me um Shadow Edge the 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 Dark Wolf, okay? That that's, that's my real name. I feel her head nod slightly and I keep going. Oh by the way, if you're actually a furry in the audience, I don't I don't give a shit if you're a furry or anything. What? I said for the for the people who are actually furries in the audience, I don't give a shit if you're a furry or anything. Like, don't, don't feel attacked. If we were able to recover all of Serrano's memory data, do you think I could be with her forever again? This is something I've been thinking about ever since I was able to talk to Serrano again. Even if Serrano's no longer physically here, I, if I can get her memories, I'd at least be able to talk to her whenever I wanted. Of course, I know this is ex an extremely selfish request. It would mean putting Reina, Kakru, and Aoisan all in danger for my own selfish re reasons. I know how just wrong, just how wrong it is to ask. That's why I never said anything about it to anyone. Reina is silent for a few moments before she finally mutters. Is that something you really want, Hiroki? I'm not sure. I see. Well, whatever you choose, to make sure you don't regret your decision. If you don't know, then I think you should think some more on whether or not this is something you really want. I have no way of knowing what kind of face Reyna is making right now. It's the same expressionless Kuderi face she always makes. However, I know that she took my question seriously. She didn't criticize or laugh at me. You're right. Thanks for listening to me. I didn't do anything much. I sit there for a while, basking in Reina's warmth. After a while, Reina starts leaning back against me. No matter what the circumstances are, it's always better to hope than to despair. After all, no one knows what the limits of, po of possibility are. What's that? A quote from a famous poet. Or so I've been told. It's a phrase Makoto Sensei told me when I was depressed because my research wasn't progressing. And it was past nap time. Hmm, <laughs> <laughs> I like it. 
Me too. Reyna sounds slightly relieved as she softly says that. Hearing her voice makes me feel warm inside, too. We still don't know where we need to go from here. But my depression is beginning to lift little by little. We leave Serrano's room and start heading back to the guest room. Why don't we try discussing what to do next once Kakeru wakes up? Yeah, though I think it might be best not to move until his injuries heal at least. Then how about while Kakeru is continuing his work here, we try going outside? That Sigma fellow might show up again. That might be an opportunity for us, though, don't you think? Opportunity? He must know more about JCO than we do. He might have some information that could help get us out of this deadlock. That's a very risky gamble. At any rate, let's at least talk about our options some more. This afternoon, I wasn't very calm. Yeah, I was a little frustrated too. I'm sorry. You apologize too much, Reyna. Oh, I'm sorry. Huh? Just saying it's, it's the only appropriate thing to say when someone says you apologize too much. Hmm. Besides, we were both at fault this afternoon. Yeah. Anyway, let's go back to the guest room and... Okay, so... Suddenly our surroundings go dark. Okay, the music just stopped, so yeah, we're gonna cut it off here. Yeah, the, uh... The, the, the surroundings went dark, just like this episode will go dark once it's end over. Yeah, so I'm going to go in to guess they just cut the power and they're going to be breaking into this house. Yeah. Also, it occurred to me that I completely forgot Hiroki had lightning punches because it hasn't factored in the plot for, like, episodes. Because it hasn't needed to. It's yeah. not convenient. But I'm just saying, because, like, I was thinking, like, oh, wait, like, if that Sigma guy shows up, yeah, he has a blade arm. But wait, Hiroki has, like, his lightning fist. And then, like, I was thinking, wait, going in the Connect Center, like, uh, what is it? Raina was like, oh, you know, we could get caught, so it'd be better if you only go one person. Or two people and have lightning fist in case you get caught. Yeah. That wouldn't be really st be very stealthy. Who gives a shit? Mm. You think they're not looking for her? Like, she's just gonna fucking solid snake that shit? No, yeah. she's not. She's gonna get caught. Yeah. Fucking lightning fist. But anyways, that's it for this episode. Thank you all for watching. Tune in next time to see why everything suddenly went dark and the music stopped. Yep. Bye-bye.